Welcome to Cute E-Learning Channel. In this lecture, we will discuss the refractory degradation, description of damage, both thermally insulating and erosion resistant refractories are susceptible to various forms of mechanical damage, cracking, spalling, and erosion, as well as corrosion due to oxidation, sulfidation, and other high temperature mechanisms. Affected materials Refractory materials include Insulating ceramic fibers, castables, refractory brick, and plastic refractories. Critical factors Refractory design, selection, and installation are the keys to minimizing damage. Anchor materials need to be selected properly. Process environment factors are also critical. Refractory lined equipment should be designed to handle the erosion, thermal shock, and thermal expansion to be encountered in service. Refractory type and density need to be selected to resist abrasion and erosion based on service requirements. Dry out schedules, cure times, and application procedures should be in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications and the appropriate ASTM requirements. Affected units or equipment. Refractories are extensively used in FCC reactor regenerator vessels, piping, cyclones, slide valves, and internals. Refractories are also used in fluid coker units, in cold shell catalytic reforming reactors, and in waste heat boilers and thermal reactors in sulfur plants. Boiler and heater fireboxes, floors, and stacks that use refractory are also affected. Appearance or morphology of damage. Refractory may show signs of excessive cracking, spalling or lift off from the substrate, softening, or general degradation. Prevention, mitigation, proper selection, design, and installation of refractory, anchors, and fillers are the keys to minimizing refractory damage and failure. Operating parameters should be monitored to identify process upsets. Inspection and monitoring Refractory and ferrules tube sheets should be visually inspected, looking for signs of chemical degradation or mechanical degradation, for example spalling, slumping, or cracking of ferrules during equipment outages. For FCC vessels, hammer testing can be used in areas known for channeling behind the refractory. Cold wall equipment can be surveyed while on stream, using IR thermography, or at least VT wear temperature indicating paint, to monitor for hot spots, and help identify potential refractory damage. Related mechanisms Oxidation sulfidation, flue gas dew point corrosion, High temperature hydrogen attack, decarburization, carburization, and metal dusting. Summary Description Both thermal insulating and erosion resistant refractories are susceptible to various forms of mechanical damage, cracking, spalling, and erosion as well as corrosion due to oxidation, sulfidation, and other high temperature mechanisms temperature range, operation temperature, high skin temperatures, on the base metal being protected, 
may result from refractory damage. Affected metallurgy, refractory materials, include insulating ceramic fibers, castables, refractory brick, and plastic refractories. Prevention, proper selection of refractory, anchors and fillers, and their proper design and installation. Operating parameters, should be monitored to identify process upsets. Inspection methods, conduct visual inspection during shutdowns. Survey cold wall equipment on stream, using IR thermography, to monitor for hot spots, to help identify refractory. For FCC vessels, hammer testing can be used. Review questions. Question number one. Refractory exposed to moisture may susceptible to water increased in refractory will cause. Answer is A. Question number two. For an on-stream inspection of for hot spots piping that has interior refractory lining, preferred method of inspection. Answer is A. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile. Thanks a lot for watching and please waiting us for next lecture.